everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Reading Nook. My name is Pagan, and today I'm joined by a familiar guest that you've heard on the show once before, and that is Kate Prada. Kate is the author of so many amazing books, but today we are going to be talking about her latest book, which is Rebels and Queens, and it's just awesome. So we're going to talk about it, and we're going to have a good time. But Kate, welcome back to the show. Hi, thank you. So last time you were on, we were talking all about timelines and TBRs, which was a huge success. And um, I'm excited for the next time we do one of those events. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. But it was so fun connecting with all the authors during that. And it was also really fun connecting with you and learning about your books and learning about everybody else's at the same time. So how has life been since then? <laughs> uh, life has been chaotic. Um, we had a big move this summer and we're still trying to get settled into um, the new coast and all the little hiccups that go with that. Um, but I somehow managed to put out a book during all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Um, which if you follow the blog, you've probably already seen me promote the book a little bit. Um, I was waiting for Kate to get settled before she came on the show to talk about it. But uh, yes, you would have already seen some blog posts about it and there will be a review coming up eventually. Uh, my MS has been being stupid, literally stupid with a capital S. So every my schedule's way far behind on all my blog writing, unfortunately. So thank you for those who subscribe to the blog <laughs> and are patient with me. <laughs> um, so Rebels and Queens, where did this book start? Like, where did it come into being? Um, if this was actually my anthology submission, um, the Romance Riot had put out its first ever anthology last spring. And, um, it was one of those like Black Rose, like the story had been kind of in my head for the better part of a decade and a half. Um, and I was working on Shadow at the time and mm -hmm. I thought it'd be great to jump in on this anthology you know the romance right was putting it out like I kind of felt I I should participate um and their only criteria for the anthology was it had to have um strong female friendships and there had to be an easter egg of a queen at some point in the story um and I was like well I could put some friends in this I could make this work I could you know and I had never planned on it to be a romance which is a common theme with me <laughs> but um, I needed to kind of like fill it out a little more and it it just turned into a romance. I mean, from everything I've heard about the book, which again, with my schedule, I have not gotten to dive into it. It's on my Kindle. It is staring at me and it's looking at me like, hey, you should read me. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I haven't gotten there. But um, from everything I've read, like the romance is really good. And it's just one of those romances that they play off of each other super well. And I'm just, oh, I'm so excited to read it. Not only that, you you stole my heart with the whole horse girl thing because I'm a horse girl. I was a cowgirl growing up. So... <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, the horse on the cover is actually my cousin's horse. That's um, a beautiful Matt. photo, though. Wow. Yeah, I, I took that picture. It was probably like one of the last few times I've been on a horse, and it's been close to a decade since I've been on a horse. Um, but she used to keep her horses close to where I grew up, and mm -hmm. um, we about a mile from the beach. And so, you know, yeah, you want to go, you know, do a trail. And so we up and down uh the old the old county road just down to the beach and back all the time and I literally took that picture sitting on them as we were headed down to the beach I mean that was going to be one of my questions of who did the cover because it's gorgeous and oh yeah like literally it's probably the cover was one of those things that first stood out for me and obviously I love your books but at the same time I was like I don't even know what this book's about and I don't care. I want to read it because of the cover. <laughs> so yeah. bravo on the cover. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's funny. I actually, at first, um, I think the horse in it at the end that she kind of uses to escape or whatever. I think when I first wrote it, and I think when it first appeared in the anthology, the horse was a chestnut. But then I was like, well, I need to um, get this cover done but I'm like I have some great horse pictures myself I'm like so I kind of don't want to pay for stock photos if I don't have to mm -hmm. and then Max is a bay, so I had to change the color of the horse in the book so. I mean that's an easy fix though so yeah 
Yeah, that that's definitely an easy fix. Also, I think in the, the description of the book, I don't know if I've ever read a description that has literally the town bicycle written in the description. <laughs> I mean, that was we've all heard the... the term, but I was like, she actually put that in the the description of the book? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it was like the one thing, like every beta reader, like every person who messaged me after the anthology came out, they're like, the town bicycle. Like, are you, some people had never heard of it before and I had to explain it and they were like, oh, my God, that is perfect and you're ridiculous. And it's just like, I don't know, it's, um. I definitely had a little bit of a wild streak in my like late twenties. Now my dog's gonna start drinking water because he's mad. Hey, you saw? Cool. Sorry, that's cool. Sorry, we we like puppies on the show. The puppies just want to come say hi and be a part of the party. It's cool. <laughs> I started talking and he was immediately like, "What do you mean you're not gonna let me out right now?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> he every time I go to make a TikTok, he does this. Um. <laughs> so but I, um so yeah anyway like I had a bit of a like wild street kind of like my mid to late 20s um alongside of my cousin who's whose horse that is and I definitely think some of those barroom shenanigans that happen in the book and some of the the words and the names that were called out um have come from a real place I mean you know life <laughs> imitates art art imitates life you know it works. <laughs> I don't think I, I mean, I never got, um, I never got thrown into county jail after a, a bar fight or anything, but, um, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's funny though. I don't think I actually heard the term town bicycle until I moved here next to a military base. And then everyone's oh. like, yeah, it's the town bicycle. And I was like, what the fuck is a town bicycle? What? It's like literal bicycle? And they're like, no, 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 no. And then they explained it to me. Also, I'm not going to explain it on the podcast. If you want to know, Google. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google that on your own or research it on your own. Um, but I, I think it, it does get explained in the book. Yeah. Um, I think it's more something that you hear near military bases because it happens mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> yep. it's, it's definitely a small town term. Like it's, you know, and we all, have, if we haven't heard it before, like, because everybody was like, what does this mean? And like, I actually put the character explaining it because I had a few people ask me in like beta reading or whatever like wait what is this um and it's one of those things like once you explain it every single person's like oh yeah yeah I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think at one point um the girl gets another girl gets called a uh, shovel face and she was like wait what it's like because your face is so flat it looks like you took a shovel to the head you know like Oh I've my heard gosh. that one. Yeah, it's I've I've heard that one at the bar before too. Like it, a lot of the in granted, I'm from New England, but still like a small town is a small town. Small town is a small town, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's definitely stuff that I've I've heard or I've witnessed or you know. I love that shit. though. That's so, <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> oh, it's gonna bring back a lot of my memories of my youth that uh I love and regret all at the same time because I was young and stupid. <laughs> right? Those are the best times, man. They make the, the best, best times. They, they do make the best stories. And then when you get done, you're just like, oh, now that I'm older, I'm just like, how did you not die? Oh, my God. Oh my how God, did you right? not die? <laughs> right? Oh, gosh. The things I did in my youth. But... Then we grow up yeah. and we write stories about the things that we did in our youth vicariously through our characters. And then everyone's just like, how is your character not dead? Uh, I didn't die, so she's not going to die. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've thrown a little bit of some sorts of shenanigans and fuckery in just about every single book. Like, um, there's a scene in Shadow where, like, she needs to go to the bar. She needs to, she's like undercover she's trying to like get close to like a mob boss or whatever and she's like come on we're gonna go dancing to like her friend like she needs a cover they need to go be you know cute dumb girls at the bar and her friend's like we don't have enough money to even like get drinks like what are you talking about and she's like i got you and she just shouts like waits till like a lull in the music and she's like happy birthday and then like all of a sudden their drinks are paid for all night long and it's like yeah i did that at one point to my friend like um yeah i think <laughs> yeah she had just gotten jumped and she was like we had 20 bucks between us and she's like how are we gonna go out tonight and I'm like I got you and 
the happy birthday thing, it works every time. It like, does, right? It does. <laughs> It works it doesn't really how old you well. Are either. Like, <laughs> people love birthdays. <laughs> like, they so, they also yeah, like little... if you also um do happy divorce, that works too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, points for effort from those who have like experienced these things. So, <laughs> never been divorced, but I had a friend who shouted that, and again, all of our drinks are paid. We were like twenty two. I don't understand how that one worked. I'm like, how would <laughs> really we would be divorced at 22 i'm like okay whatever and sure enough it worked granted she, the friend that i was running with at the time we did a lot of things that made me just go hmm we shouldn't have been doing that at all yeah. <laughs> at all that might have been illegal that probably was illegal in some of those cases yeah. yep um yeah also jenna if you're listening to the show i still miss you and love you you were awesome <laughs> Anywho, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now I know you expanded the book a bit, quite a bit from um, the anthology. Uh, yes. How was that? And obviously, you know, there's some steamy scenes in it. And so, it, does the book still count as Diet Spice? It's this one's probably my tamest out of all of the books I've read. Um, had I made it a full length novel, then yeah, it, it could have made it a lot more steamier. Um, I just couldn't, um, I still wanted it to be a short story. Mm -hmm. um, and my dumbass was like, oh, well, I can, I want to get something out this summer before we move because once we move, that's it. Like all momentum is completely like derailed. And um, I won't probably get anything out again until like later this fall if I'm lucky. Cause I, um, I do set deadlines. I don't ever stick to them. So yeah, I, I have a yeah. deadline coming up at the end of October and I'm not done yet. So <laughs> I know I'm, I'm desperately trying to get Lachlan's book out this fall and then queen, which is the third book of Wraith and shadow. Like everyone's like, we need that soon. And I was writing both of those at the same time. Um, and um i'm still working on both of those but so i was like okay rebels was ten thousand words for the anthology i'm like i could double it and what i did was i asked my beta readers to kind of go through it first and like mm -hmm. can you just tell me what would be good to like add add more detail to and um they were great with that and so i went through and filled out scenes i added a couple new scenes um, I kind of dragged the ending out a little bit. It didn't end at the same place as it did in the anthology. It kind of went a little bit further past that. Mm -hmm. And so it had like a much nicer resolution kind of. Um, had I had the time um, and felt like dedicating another six to nine months on this, I would have made it a, a full length novel and there definitely would have been um, some steamy bits, but I just... I got in a panic and felt like I needed to publish something. So <laughs> I stopped at 25,000 instead of like 70. So, I mean, that happens. That that does happen. Yeah. And, you know, from all the press I've seen of this book between TikTok and Instagram and everywhere else, it, it's definitely hitting the mark. So you did a good job. And oh, I'm sure you. everyone else is probably just going like, a little longer please <laughs> yeah it's um and uh, again like again that was some of the feedback I got after this second edition of it came out and so maybe like down the road like a couple years or so maybe I will one day make it a full length um I've had thoughts to do a couple more horse girl type stories and do like mm -hmm. my own little like horse girl collection that kind would of be thing. fun though you could even do yeah. like the the short story kind of like rebels and queens are but just you know do like the whole horse girl series with it and keep them yeah all the same length that would be fun yeah i was thinking about something like that and uh, with like different completely different characters different Dandalus. horses different yeah. settings um but someone was like we really need bailey's story the cousin and i'm like i just never really pictured giving her a story but I I also said the same thing about Lachlan, and here I am, thirty five thousand <laughs> words in. So, <laughs> well, I mean, then you could just do the whole series of it, and then like, ta da! Now you have book content. There you go. <laughs> yep. yep. 
<laughs> sometimes that's the bane of writers it's like i don't know what to write next you know what do i do and then they're like give us a whole series just like this they don't have to be yes. connected they can be standalones it's fine just give us a whole series like that i'm like yeah well okay <laughs> there's content can i actually write these is the other question <laughs> yeah <laughs> so rebels and queens is coming out now when is your projected deadline for the locks book um well see the thing is <laughs> i'd love to have that out end of october early november it's um i'm just about at the halfway point i thought i had thirty-five thousand words but what i do is like i if a scene comes to me it comes to me and i just hammer it out and stick it kind of at the end of the document like i have a whole section um of out of sequence chapters Gotcha. And when I hit to that point where that chapter fills in, I, you know, cut it and paste it where it needs to go. And then I keep going um, until, you know, the next one comes up. Well, I was so proud of myself. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, like 36, 37,000 words. Like I'm kicking ass. And I realized that one of the scenes that I had already like written up to and then wrote past, I had, didn't delete it out of the bottom oh, of, no. the, of the document. <laughs> So I'm like telling people, I'm like, yeah, I got 35,000 words, but 3,000 of them were duplicates. <laughs> so I'm at 33,000. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So we're at 33,000. Um, I do have, I wanted to get a uh, queen out end of this year, maybe early next year. Um, but then as, because we're all authors and writers mm -hmm. and TikTok is, a great way to connect with people who can provide wonderful distractions. Um, I think I may have inadvertently joined a Kraken romance anthology. That's so neat. I got to, yeah, I got to crank out 20,000 words by December about a Kraken. So I have a thousand of those so far, which the short stories, like, you know, at first they were kind of difficult for me because I have too many things I want to say, but I think, um, with this, like, I know pretty succinctly what I want to happen. And I, I'm pretty sure this one, I'm going to, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but like, I think it should go quickly. That's fair. That's totally fair. Yeah. Um, when it comes to TikTok, I'm also one of those points of distraction because I, my love language is sending people TikToks. If I like you, I send you a ton of TikToks. As Kate yes. well knows, because I send yeah. her a lot. <laughs> especially a lot of modern warfare uh, thirst traps. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Which, you know, it's really funny. I had never thought about writing like a full blown military book. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the COD cosplayers. There's one in the works now. <laughs> in my oh, is there good? I have, I literally one night I was laying there in bed and I was, you know, scrolling TikTok as one does. And I came mm -hmm. across this, you know, like cosplayer that was like playing out a scene. And I'm just like, Oh my god, this this I could this is a book. This is a oh yeah. this is a book. And I immediately hammered out like I don't know, 1500 words <laughs> in a, a Google Doc and I'm like well, there's a book now. Shit. <laughs> I know that was the whole um what's his name? Ghost from yes, the studio. That Ghost. was that whole thing I was stuck in the truck. We were somewhere on the 40, cutting across the southern part of the country, like heading east. And, you know, I was popping in and out of Discord when I had service. And it was, um, April was like, well, when's someone going to make me a character? And it's like, I'll make you a character, but it's going to be Kate Prada style. Like, if, you know, um, so I was like, if we're doing a rom-com, it's going to be, I'm like, I'm going to do a dark rom-com. And everyone's like, uh, I remember reading me. this. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, wait, what? I'm like, I'm going to do it about like serial killers or something just absolutely ridiculous. Um, there is a girl who does skits on TikTok mm -hmm. and she basically like how millennials interact and like, like basically like a saw type situation. And so here's. <laughs> yes, I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And like, so she's done a few and every time I'm like, I want this to be a rom-com. Like it's hysterical. Like, cause it's, you know, they get kidnapped and it's, they have to do all these things. And it's like, okay, but like, and like the boyfriend is like blowing up her phone, being a jerk. And the, you know, the kidnapper's like, wait, for real? Like, you want me to just go kill him instead? And it's like, that would be freaking hilarious. 
as a rom-com and like yes I have a dark sense of humor um so I don't know I I want to tread lightly because I don't want to like glamorize or whatever serial killers but like I think the premise I think you can fictionalize it and I mean come on we have haunting Adeline out yes there. and yeah. there's so True. many other books out there like um you know hooked uh by emily mcintyre and okay. so yeah. there there's a lot of glamorized serial killers out there in dark romance mm-hmm. and i think that the one thing that we have to always remember when we're reading our fiction books is first rule of the game is they are fiction they are so, fiction. and obviously everyone is going nuts over sweeney todd right now because the new broadway that's out me included <laughs> um so i think you'll be okay i think you just have to make sure that your trigger warning list is there and all that good stuff yeah um also if you're writing this can i be april's best friend that also gets kidnapped please <laughs> i don't mind if it's kate Prater's style. well no so it's like turning into a whole series and it's like you know serial killers I or whatever that wear masks and, <laughs> and so now people are calling like what masked character they want to be kidnapped by and i'm like all right cool let's just uh, do this so i have someone claimed michael myers already i would do ghost um, or conic either one okay yeah yeah so the, obviously or like vegan I can't be from like, modern warfare either one like i would be happy okay. with any of those three okay yeah no i'll just add it to the just to add this, it to I think the this list would be, <laughs> Yeah, I think this would be like another like little short story like standalone series. Yes. Like it's just I'm so happy like the for masked, you. <laughs> the masked villain series or something. I gotta but like they're gonna like my whole intention is for them to be funny. Yeah. Like yeah. Do it different. Instead of doing it like, you know, dark and broody, do it dark and comical. Yeah. Just dark and goofy, man. I mean, honestly, like I run a tabletop horror uh game on saturdays and there there was one day we were all you know playing and all this stuff and there was a scene in there where everybody was digging up a body trying or trying to find out if the dead person that they keep seeing is actually in the grave and so mm-hmm. they're digging it up and one of the characters is a mob boss and so she's like i'm calling my henchmen because apparently none of us can dig like honestly they their roles were so comical they rolled like ones are i'm sorry they rolled 100s which is equivalent to a one and i'm like i can't kill off my entire cast this is like game four i can't kill you all off now (laughs) so i'm like you get smacked in the face with a shovel because you drop it and step on it you over here just fall in the grave that's already dug (laughs) i'm like and then one of their henchmen that I'm rolling for also rolls a 100, and I'm like, he's just da 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 walking along and goes ass over tea kettle over a tombstone. And oh, everybody no. is just laughing. They're like, who are these people? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I cannot explain what comes out of my brain when it does. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, yes, I, I am all about horror comedy. I don't think that there's enough of it, and I yeah. think there should be more of it. <laughs> yeah, like, I just... I don't know, like, it's, um, I think that sometimes, like, even the dark stuff can be freaking hysterical, like, like, not that, like, bad things are funny, but just, like, you can find humor in, like, a lot of situations. I mean, like, there's a lot of us out there that, like, you know, that's, like, we cope through humor. Yeah, we, you know, we have to cope through humor, because if not, uh-huh. we'd just sit here and cry the whole time. Mm-hmm. So like I'm such a jerk. Like anytime there's like a TikTok, it's like, well, your mom did this or your mom that. It's like I will stitch it every time and be like, my mom's dead. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, so I know exactly what you mean. Like honestly, though, like it's one of those things where the dark humor really comes into play. And then you know, some folks who are, I don't know, I guess mentally well uh, or coping <laughs> well with life, that are just like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm are you okay? <laughs> Like this is just my brain, okay? Just yeah. Jive with her zone. Sorry. Uh, yeah. For those who are listening, yes, we. Some of us who are especially romance writers and basically mm-hmm. all romance writers in some way, shape, or form, have some dark humor to us. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We have to because mm-hmm. otherwise, some of the things that come out of our brain would just go. Oh yeah, I think you might need to talk to your therapist there. It's like I already did. My therapist was like, "You're normal. You just have anxiety." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywho, so now that we know that you have like 25 different projects in the works, thanks to all of the romance, right? <laughs> right. 
Oh, it's going to be good, though. And I can't wait for them. I think they're going to be awesome. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because, you know, uh, obviously just discovering your books and getting into them now. Now I'm like addicted to your characters and I'm like, OK, uh -huh. let's let's <laughs> get Yay. on that. Get on that right. And there, Kate, please do it. I, yeah. I need to find out what happens. More, please. <laughs> <laughs> Over here being all over twist. Can we have some more, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of that. I get people being like, oh, especially when they get to the end of the shadow, and I get a lot of messages just being like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I've done that to some of my favorite authors, too, where I'm just like, hey, so I finished the book. It was fantastic. But when's the next one? They're like, next year. And I'm like, I hate you so much <laughs> right now i also love you so please write the book and please don't hate me but i hate you <laughs> oh, right. oh it's such a good time um so obviously since you moved i'm guessing you probably don't have any book signings in the future right now oh god no like <laughs> um i would love to do a book signing but like um from what I hear from a lot of people, like it, it takes a very long time. To, like you got to get in like a year ahead of time or you have to, you know, be on a list or wait. And it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing from one day to the next. So I just, it's, I'm too afraid to commit to anything right now because the way life goes and especially um, with the military, like we could be like, we totally plan. Like we were in Washington. We had planned to be there for three years. We lasted a year and two weeks like so it's we never know what's happening from like one day to the next and I'm like as soon as I commit to like a book signing on the east coast I'm getting sent to Texas like it's it's always just so unpredictable so I just I haven't um I haven't even looked at book signings really that's completely fair um I know that it, it's so hard especially like the big book signings that are happening now they're really hard to get into um back in my day you know way, way back <laughs> when when i was you know hardcore authoring um i didn't even do traditional book signings i did conventions i did small time okay. conventions because a i mean don't get me wrong book signings are fun but i also like people in cosplay hence my tiktok mm -hmm. feeds <laughs> yeah <laughs> getting to go meet people in cosplay and also meet like some of the actors and all that stuff at the, the conventions was always a good time and so i would just buy a vendor table and then go sell it to conventions and that was always a fantastic time but this was also way pre-covid like we're talking like four yeah. years pre-covid so Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know what that scene is like now. I haven't done it in a long time and I've heard great things about book signings and also absolute horror stories. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've thought about doing like a couple craft fairs or craft shows like here, especially like around the holidays and just like getting a table and setting up with my books. Um, yeah, I, I haven't even begun to look into those yet. Um, but I have, you know, being in New England is really kind of cool because it's so small and so concentrated. Like I'm in Connecticut, but it would be super easy just to pop up to Boston or pop over to Cape Cod or mm -hmm. Rhode Island, you know, and, and there's always stuff, especially on the holidays going on. Yeah, um, but like I said, like I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even looked at the, like, which I should, because I used to, um, I used to sell like aprons and like wooden sign, like, just make stuff and sell at craft fairs. Oh, like, so I have all the stuff to like set it up, but well, just one that, more would, that would be fun. If you end up doing that, that would be super cool. Um, yeah. but you know, obviously I'm assuming everybody can keep track of that through social media, because if you follow Kate on yeah. TikTok, you will have all the updates. She's very good about <laughs> on TikTok. I'm very terrible about it. So, um, but yes, Kate will keep you all posted on the TikToks. And you're still on Instagram, right? Yes. And Facebook, maybe? Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. check me out and actually remember. Wow, cool. Yay! <laughs> all the links to Kate's social media will be in the show description. So will all of the book links. Um, obviously, as always, please go and check out all of Kate's books. If you are somebody who is financially strapped, especially in today's crazy economy, uh, check out your local library. If they don't have a copy, request a copy. Mm -hmm. They will order a copy or borrow it from another library. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, make sure you do that. Support your local library. Support your authors. If you read the book, review it because that helps your authors way more than you know.
So yeah. <laughs> Kate, this has been so much fun. Obviously, you're you're welcome to come back anytime and we'll chit chat about everything and anything in between and all of your yeah. books. <laughs> <laughs> I'd and love to. We will do it very, very soon. And as soon as you have another book come out, well, we'll just get you back on the show and we'll talk about it. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It'll, it'll either be uh, Lachlan or Kraken or I don't know. Something in between all of them. <laughs> 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 It'll be a good time. Uh, but everyone who's listening, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for supporting the show and being here. And as always, take care of yourselves, be kind to each other, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.